The Great Search, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks so much, DigiKey. Every week, Lady to use our power of engineering to help you, yes, you find the things you're looking for on digikey.com. Lady what are you looking for this week? Okay, so this week I've been working on implementing and using the SAM M8Q GNSS GPS module. And I wanted to see, first off, like what other GPS modules were available at DigiKey from Ublox. And second, are there any other ones that have a built in antenna? Now, I've designed GPS stuff that doesn't have a built in antenna, but boy, it like makes things a lot easier for people if it's like you don't have to plug something in, the antenna can't come loose, whatever. So let's look at um, DigiKey and let's look at uBlocks. Normally, I don't look at a particular vendor, but in this case, I, I am, I'm looking just at one vendor. So receivers. Okay, so this is lots, and they have a lot of different stuff. And they've got, you know, they've been around for a really long time, at least 20 years, because I remember when I was interning right out of college that the that, that blocks the Neo series was like the hot new thing. Um, and they were they were pretty sweet. Okay, so let's look at only uBlocks. Let's look at active. And I just want stuff that's normally stocking. Okay, let's just see what, what we've got. So there's like about 45 like standard stocking um, modules. And let's start with, yeah, like some of these have like built-in antennas. So let's look at ones that have built-in antennas to start because I do want to, let me see, uh, antenna on board chip, on board patch. I'll do PCB trace too. I don't know how you can do a PCB trace antenna for GPS. Okay, so these are the modules. So this one actually is cute, but wow, this is a really tiny little antenna, but maybe it's like for very small wearables. Um, this one, I think there's some confusion because that does not seem to have an antenna built in, all, unless it happens to be, maybe they are saying you expect to use a trace antenna. This is the M10Q. This is another one of those limited ones. And this is the one I'm using now, the M8Q. And um, I'll be honest, I was a little bit like, well, what's the difference? Because the pricing, it, it's actually, it's a little less expensive for the M10Q. Um, what's the difference between that and the M8Q? And so I did a little bit of a deep dive between the two. And the M10 series is newer. That 10 actually means it's the 10th generation versus the M8 is the eighth generation which I actually really like. I actually wanted to uh, have an aside here. Um, whatever you do, if you're making multiple versions of a chip, don't make smaller numbers be newer. Um, this happened with like these Zigbee modules that I used once where like series one was better and newer than series two or something. And it was like incredibly confusing. Thankfully, the numbers only go up. Thank you, only increment, please. So M10 is newer. And the amount of current used by the M10 is like significantly less, which makes me also wonder if I'm maybe reading this data sheet wrong. Because it says here for like acquisition and tracking that the current is about 25, 30 milliamps, which is standard, right? That's what I've, I've seen for most GPSs. But here um, it says that the indicative power requirements are like half or one third. Like if you're using just GPS, it's only five milliamps, which is pretty amazing. Well, this is in power safe mode, but even continuous mode, eight milliamps. Um, if you happen to have all of the you know, Galileo and GLONASS and Beidou, uh, like a whole 10 milliamps tracking, 13 milliamps. Um, so like one third as much current, which is amazing. Um, so I didn't realize like, what a significant difference because I'm so used to like, oh, they're all about the same 25, 30 milliamps. The M10 is also a tiny bit more sensitive, but the, the big, big change here is, is the incredible um, current savings. Okay. Um, they're also pin compatible. So in general, I think if you were to pick which module you wanted to go with, go with the M M10. However, before I, I keep going, I did want to just show off the other, let me get rid of the antenna connector. I'll tell you. So the vast majority of UBlox modules, this is the M, this is the M10, but without the built-in antenna. So it's it's much smaller, much more compact. The vast majority of UBlox GNSS modules will require an external antenna. And UBlox does have external antennas. That, like 
you know, like big ones. Traditionally, if you're doing something with GNSS, if you're doing location tracking, um, either you want something really, really tiny or the antenna can be as big as you want, right? If it's automotive or something or um, like tracking um, like a big, like a boat, car, uh, you know, goods, the antenna be, can be quite large. Um, but usually the GPS receiver is like inside of a little metal box somewhere like the bottom of, you know, and, and protected from the weather. And then the antenna is brought out and is like attached to the top. So while I personally think that these patch exposed antennas are quite handy because they're easy to use, they're not um, typical of, of use cases. So like the Neo series, and then you also might wonder, so most of these, you know, $15, $20 or so, that's not unusual. And then once in a while, you're going to see one and you're like, whoa, what's up with this module? Let me find one where it's like crazy expensive. Yeah, like these Leah M8s. $100, suddenly it's like $90, $100, the MAP, um, $128. So these are the um, RTK capable modules. So these use um, either cloud-based service or they have a um, uh, two devices that can synchronize with each other and they can give you centimeter level precision. Um, GNSS will never give you better than like two and a half meter. That's kind of the, the capability of it. If you need higher precision, you'd go to RTK. We'll cover it maybe in another great search. Um, but for this one, let's only talk about, unfortunately, you can't filter by price, but you'll see like either of these modules are like 15 to 30 bucks or they're like 100 and to $250. There's nothing in between. Um, so if you're, if you're going to use this for a product, I think prototype with the ones that have the patch antenna just for like ease of use. Like you just pop it on your design and you can at least get started immediately, but it does have to have access to the sky so you know, hopefully your office is near a window if you don't um you'll need to put on an, an uh, antenna connector and then ubox actually sells antennas and they're a reasonable price and they're great you know you, you know they're going to work so check out if you search for ubox antenna um you can see these are all you know just a couple hundred in stock. On the other end, they have like little magic. Sometimes they're magnetic. And they have an SMA connector on the other end. You can get them with different ones. 99% of the time, it's SMA. Um, if you care about size, you can get MMCX or SMB. You plug it in, you put this outside. And of course, if they're fully weather weatherized and they you know, can be exposed to rain, wind, cold, heat, and whatever. But to get started, I would go with. And the one I think I'm going to pick up next, because now that I'm done with this M8, you know, I want to do another one. Let's do the built-in antenna patch. Although those little chip antennas were kind of cute too. I'm using the M8, but actually, ironically, even though it's cheaper, which usually means it's less good, it's actually, this one is going to get you much, much better. Um, power results. So this is the M10Q series from uBlock. So this is my pick for the great search. If you want a ready to go GNSS module, ultra low power, easy to use, and you can use NMEA, I2C, or UBlock, uh, UBX interface to read data from it. And that's a great search. Where is